The Nobel Prize in Medicine in uh, 2012 uh, was awarded for studies in cell differentiation and uh, the technique of induced pluripotent embryonic stem cells. It sounds very complicated, but it's an interesting story. To understand what is cell differentiation, first uh, think about a boy. Let's call him Johnny. He's just starting school, and there are a lot of things that interest him. He's interested in computers. He could be a computer scientist. He's interested in tinkering. He could be an engineer. He's interested in uh, airplanes. He could be a pilot. Uh, he's interested in bugs. Maybe he will be a biologist. He's interested in building things. Maybe he will be a, a designer of houses. And he's interested in looking around the world. But by the time he gets to middle school, he's not interested anymore in bugs. They are disgusting. And he's not interested in tinkering. It, it's too tedious. But still, there are a lot of things that he can be if he grows up. In high school, uh, there are a lot of some things which does not interest him anymore and he's studying a lot of computers and he's studying a lot about airplanes and he's studying a lot about the world so maybe he will become a computer scientist a pilot or a geographer we don't know but these are the things that interest him and uh, by the time he gets to uh, college he decides that okay i want to be a pilot and that is the only thing that interests me it's similar uh, with the fate of cells. We all start out from a fertilized egg cell. And an egg cell can make any kind of cell in our body. Skin cells, muscle cells, nerve cells, whatever we want. Uh, we call it a totipotent cell. The fertilized egg cell is totipotent. It could be anything. In the embryo, the fate of the cells is a bit more limited. One cell will become nerve cells and muscle cells. Another one will become cells of uh, the intestines and so on. But still, there are a lot of types that they can be. We call them pluripotent. There are a lot of uh, things that they can turn uh, into later. But most of our cells in our body are for a different purpose. And for instance, these fat cells, if they divide, they will become uh, other fat cells. They are unipotent. So the question was that uh, interests, uh, interested the, the researchers is why this process goes on and how it goes on. How, what is the difference between uh, a pluripotent cell and a unipotent cell? And first they saw that this is just as we have seen with John, is a one-way process. As a cell matures, uh, it gets pluripotent and then unipotent, and it's a one-way uh, path. But then Sir John B. Gordon, in uh, 1962, uh, made a famous experiment which showed that there is a way around. He took an egg cell from a frog and took out the nucleus from that egg cell. The nucleus is the little part which contains all the information. Then he took a tadpole and a skin cell of the tadpole and took out with a micropipette the uh, nucleus of the tadpole's egg cell and put this egg, uh, this nucleus into the egg. And what happened? It started to divide and turned into a brand new tadpole. So we could see that whatever the changes are, they are not irreversible. So there is a way back if we want to. And that was uh, the experiment which earned him a Nobel Prize this year, or at least half of it. And this process was uh, what uh, uh, Shinya Yamanaka, uh, the Japanese scientist, was interested in as well. Um, he tried to find out what are the differences between these pluripotent embryonic stem cells and uh, the differentiated cells, which genes are act active in one and the other. 
and uh, finally could uh, get down to four genes uh, which define embryonic stem cells. And then took uh, fibrocytes from the connective tissue of mice, these are differentiated unipotent cells, and put into them those four genes to make them active. And what happened was that these cells turned into pluripotent stem cells. They could differentiate into anything that uh, he wanted them. And he called this technique induced pluripotent stem cells. And this is what earned him the other half of the Nobel Prize. So the question is, how can we use this? And uh, Gurdon's uh, research was the key to cloning. Dolly, the famous sheep, could uh, not be made without that research. And cloning is used now in research in a lot of fields, in, in medicine studies, and, uh, and um, some say that it can help us preserve uh, species and so on. So it, it's, it's a hot field that everybody uses, and the foundation of that was the research of Gurdon. The uh, studies of Yamanaka help us in another way. Uh, as researchers wanted to study stem cells, uh, they are very good uh, uh, to understand how cells work. Uh, they needed human stem cells. And um, one idea was to use embryonic stem cells from fertilized eggs that were not implanted uh, uh, into uh, mothers during uh, uh, artificial uh, fertilization. Uh, but that has a lot of ethical issues, and some countries let them use it, and others did not. Uh, but with this technique, with the technique of induced pluripotent stem cells, we don't need those anymore. We can make as many stem cells for ourselves as we want to. Already they are using this technique in uh, medicine. For instance, someone has a disease uh, of his nerve tissue, the nerve cells. And we would like to see how his cells react to some drug. Uh, we cannot take out nerve tissue from the patient, but we can take out some skin cells. First turn them into uh, induced uh, pluripotent stem cells, then differentiate them to nerve cells and check in a petri dish how they react to the drug. Uh, those stem cells that uh, are made in this uh, way uh, are not good to uh, transplant back into the patient because of the four genes that are activated in them, that are put into them, uh, two are tumor genes, so they sometimes turn into uh, carcinous uh, cells. So uh, we cannot use it for that uh, purpose. But now we have uh, techniques which uh, put in not the, the genes, but the factors that the genes code and maybe this can help us to uh, use, even for that purpose, uh, the stem cells made in this way.